My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, we will learn about menus. Uh, what we call menus in Solaris are objects that can be used to better organize um, whatever you display on the screen, in screen coordinates. So, in the previous tutorial, we saw that we can display various information uh, above the map, like these uh, HUD icons here, the hearts, the rupee counter. We can show pictures, sprites, or text uh, quite easily. But menus will really make your life easier to and better separate um, yeah, all the different information that you, you want to display, the order in which they should be displayed, and also how they can receive um, input events like keyboard events, mouse events, and things like that. Um, so we will start by doing pretty much the same thing as in the previous tutorial, but using the menu API. And then we will uh, move some code and, and see how easy it is to, to make a title screen uh, using the, the menus. Okay, so um, let's start by loading a small picture here just to have something to display on the screen. So far now it's the same thing as last time we create a picture from the PNG file which is in sprites menus slash uh, team logo fixed dot png so this, this is relative to the sprites directory by default and we want to uh, draw this when the map is drawn so that was how we did it last time uh, we did logo draw on the screen so that was essentially the previous tutorial Okay, and maybe some better coordinates here. Um, okay, right in the middle, but <laughs> not even perfectly centered, but this is really not the topic. Uh, let's put it, at least let's try so that we can see the hero. Okay, fine. Um, so the menu API, it allows you to have an object and that is called a menu. And this object is actually just a table, a regular standard Lua, Lua table that you can create with this syntax in Lua. And instead of map on draw, you will do menu on draw, but then it's pretty much the same. I will call this parameter destination surface because it's not always directly the screen actually. Um, and I just need to kind of register my menu in the map context. So when the map starts, I want to tell Solaris that this menu should be that this table, this Lua table, should be considered as a menu on the map. Uh, so it's a bit similar to the timer API. When you start a timer, you do sol.timer.start, and the first parameter is the context, which defines, which limits the lifetime of your timer, and it's a bit similar for menus. You start by the by giving a context parameter here. So it can be a map, a game, so yeah, the game, or uh, another menu, or uh, the main object, sol.main, which means that the menu will have uh, a, a global lifetime. So here I want uh, my menu to belong to this map, so that whenever, whenever the map closes, I want the menu to stop. And then it will be 
uh, the responsibility of the Solaris engine to appropriately, appropriately call the various menu events like on draw here. On draw will be called as long as the map exists and the menu is not uh, stopped. Um, yeah, so let's just test this first to see if it works. Yes, it still works. So as in the previous tutorial, when my map stops, the menu is also stops stopped. It's no longer being drawn. And um, if I, you can also notice that during the fade out transition of my map, the logo here also is also included in the fade out. Con contrary to the HUD icons here, the heart and the rupee counter, which belong to actually the, the game context and not, not to the map context. If I tried with in, on the game context here, uh, that would also work. Then my menu will, will still only start when this map starts, but then it will also stay on other maps. And here it's not really great because I started my, I started duplicate <laughs> instances of my menu. Because I leave, I left the map and I entered it again. So you probably don't want to to do that. It can generate some tricky bugs. Um, but what what's important is that menu menus have real really a lot of events. Um, you can be notified whenever the screen is redrawn. You can be notified at every frame uh, with on update. You can be notified when a keyboard key is pressed when a joypad, uh, something happens uh, on the joypad, or when a command is pressed. Comments are higher level uh, inputs that can actually be mapped by low level keys or joypad uh, events and things like that. So all of these inputs events already exist on most of Solaris types like maps, map game, sol.main. But uh, yeah, it's useful to know that menus also have them, and and you can you can use these. When you run a map, when you run a game um, with a default script, you already had have the HUD here, the head up display, and every element of this HUD is a single independent menu, and that allows this API allows to better control um, the order in which they are displayed, the order in which they receive keyboard ev events. Um, let's say that we want to close our menu when we receive some keyboard key event. So there is this event on key pressed on menus. Like I said, on key press also exists on, on the map data type, on, on game, and on various objects. But here, I will receive the, the event as long as my menu is active. And if the key pressed is, let's say, C, I'm creating on purpose a conflict with the sword key. Because C also activates the sword attack of the hero. So then I want to play some sound. Uh, let's say we play pause closed, even if this is not really a pause menu. We will see how to make a pause menu. But basically it will be using the menu API and probably multiple menus and, and even nested menus. And we want to stop this menu. So after you wait, after you call sol dot menu dot stop and your menu object here, Solarus will no longer consider that that your Lua table is an active menu, and it will stop calling any events on your menu. Let's see if this is working. I will press C now. Yeah, it works, but I'm still, uh, as you might have noticed, 
I uh, triggered the sword attack. Uh, and that is because I, I did nothing to indicate to Solaris that that I, I uh, t took into account the C key here. So you can return actually true from, from any of the input events, keyboard events, joypad events, uh, mouse events, finger events. You can see the detailed API, but on menus or other objects, all input events you can return true to tell uh, the engine that uh, you don't you, you don't want the the event to be propagated to objects below. So in this case, below our menu. So whatever menu is is displayed on top of others will receive this first, and the first one uh, that returns true will kind of consume the event and other objects and menus below that one will no longer receive it. So if I press C, this time I did return true, so Solaris stopped propagating the keyboard key event to other menus and to other objects. And in particular, it didn't propagate to the hero like it was doing um, before I included this return true statement. And now that my menu is disabled, is no longer active, um, it will no longer receive any event. So if I press C again, this time, there is no one to consume the C keyboard key event and the hero does receive the, the event and yeah, I'm using my sword again. So that allows you to more easily, uh, for example, um, yeah, um, consume keyboard events or input events in general from your pause menu. For example, from the, your inventory menu or, or for the, from the dialogue, dialogue box script. And yeah, avoiding that um, your hero does some action while you are browsing some some menus. Okay. Um, let's also display some little text above um, text text surface dot create like we did in the previous tutorial. The parameter of text surface dot create is a table with various parameter. You can directly put the, the text here, but if you want it to be automatically uh, translated, you can put text key instead of just text. And then it's not directly the text, but it's some ID, it's some text and identifier. Um, we will call this um, chapter 33, I think. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. And I need in my strings.dat file this one to create that string in my English language file or folder more, more exactly. Welcome to the tutorial quest. Okay. And I want to display this text on my menu also. I want it to be centered. So the width of the screen is th um, 320 pixels, so this is half of it. And let's display it here. So somewhere in the in the bottom area of the screen. I want this to be considered as the center co coordinates horizontally. 
So it means horizontal alignment here should be center. You can check the text surface API to uh, to know about all the possible properties that you can put here. Okay, now my, my menu also includes uh, some text. And again, if I if I press C, this disappears. Um, right, let's improve that and make the menu more reusable using a separated script. So I will just move the all, all the code about the, my menu here. I will move it to scripts slash menus. Oops. No, I didn't mean to open an explorer window here. Um, and I will call this welcome. Oops, no, not new folder, but new new script. Welcome.lua. Okay. Um, so I can pick, I can copy most of my code here, except except map on started because I'm no longer in map script. And here I should remove almost everything. Um, and before I write my script, I will show you how to call it. We want to call our script with, with the, we create a variable called menu and we just call using the standard require function of Lua which loads the, the, the other script only once. Um, so require scripts slash menus slash welcome. So that script that we will write, write should return a valid menu that then we can start on whatever context that we want. But uh, what is interesting here is, is that my, my script is written and doesn't know where it will be used or how long it will be uh, displayed. It knows nothing about its own lifetime and it knows nothing about what should happen when, when it ends. And this will allow us to actually use it um, also as a, as a title screen and not only in a map. So my file should look like that. It creates the menu, the texture face. None of this actually changes. The only thing is that maybe I don't want to use the C key, by the way, space, let's say. But the only thing is that we want to return the menu to uh, the caller, to whoever uh, does require uh, with our script as our script file name as a parameter. And yeah, I guess that's it. Let's try that. Yeah, it still works. And actually, um, most of um, our menus in our games and also in this default quest have their own script files. Um, for the HUD, the head up display, you can you can check them. They all have their own file: money.lua, HUD, uh, hearts.lua, HUD, icon.lua. All of these are actually uh, some some menus or scripts that creates menus and and can be used independently. And if I press space, it disappears still. Okay, cool. Um, and actually, without changing anything of my menu script, I can th this time, instead of using, showing it in our map, we can make it the title screen of our game, like I promised. So I just remove this code and in main.lua actually um, I have some code and you should have it too by default that calls this script initial menus config and initial menus config is just the list of menus of menu scripts more exactly that will be shown uh, before starting any game. So first 
the Solaris logo will be showed, will be shown, and then um, the game a game will start. So you can check the Solaris logo menu. Uh, now you should have enough knowledge to understand it because it's just another menu, uh, pretty much like like this one that we just wrote today but it has more sprites, it has some movements, it has some timers, more text and uh, yeah, just more lines in general. And when it finishes, then uh, another menu is started. That one is called Start Game. It's a bit of a special menu because we it doesn't actually show anything. Its only role is to uh, create a game and start it. But in a real game, it will be it it would probably be replaced by a save game selection menu. Um, okay, so what we just need to do is to add to our list of menus here the one that we created today: scripts slash menus slash welcome. Yay! This is our title screen. Welcome to the tutorial quest. And when I press space, the game starts. So what's really nice about organizing menus in separate files like this is that, like I said, all this code that defines our menu is completely independent of uh, where it is displayed. Is it displayed as a title screen, as a HUD element, as uh, a subscreen in of your inventory? Um, it, it doesn't really care. It just it just defines whatever it, it wants to draw while it is active and, and whenever it, it wants to, to stop. Um, and actually in, in our games we we use this system, initial menus here. Usually we display the Solaris logo, then the Solaris team logo, um, then maybe some copyright notice about uh, the fact that Solaris is open source and uh, some information like that, and then the title screen, and then the save game selection menu. There is also the language menu in our games. Um, so yeah, usually a, lo a lot of things. And I really like this organization of menus that are kept independent from each other. And as you as you saw, you can add one menu here without touching the other ones. So Solaris logo doesn't doesn't have to care about starting the next menu. It, it doesn't know if the next menu will be uh, this one or, or this one. This is just defined. The order is just defined here. So it makes uh, your life much easier, especially um, when you mm, copy some menus from one game to another. Um, the Solaris logo menu is the same script file in all our games. Um, okay, so I hope I convinced you that menus are very useful. And even more, I, I hope that I convinced you uh, to organize your code in separated files as independent from each other as possible. Mm, we will make some tutorials next about the HUD, um, which are again just other menus. And we will make a pause menu with, with an, an inventory and maybe some, some nested menus. Um, but basically the the, the main thing you have to understand is this API here. You, you create just a small table, a standard Lua table, and you define some events on your table. And as soon as someone starts your menu with sol.menu.start, then um, the events on draw, on key pressed, on whatever, will be called automatically by the engine until your menu stops or until the context of your menu is stopped. Um, okay, so hopefully this was not too much information. Uh, I, hope, I hope you will have some fun also with your menus. Um, 
yeah so feel free to join our discord and to ask questions if something is unclear and see you next time bye